So let's go ahead and kick this tour off with one of my favorite tanks. Uh, this is my buddy Scott's 75 gallon Trophius tank, dominated with a multitude of Trophius Morai Red. This tank is aquascaped with a bunch of cichlid stone and is home to a bunch of Vallisneria. Trophius are an algae grazing rock dweller from Lake Tanganyika. Trophius are a hard water species that should be kept in a species only tank, making sure to keep one fish per location in a single tank. Also with Trophius, you need to be cognizant of diet to ensure they do not get bloat. A vegetable based diet is essential. All right, we're gonna go ahead and continue here in Scott's fish room and take a look at this planted community tank. Uh, this tank is home to a variety of different rainbow species as well as the Gadea the Amica Splendens. One thing I really do like about this setup is this setup has a myriad of options. You can do species like rainbow fish, live bears, tetras, and many more. In this particular tank, I do enjoy the movement of the various colors of plants and the various rainbow fish. Just research the specific fish that you're looking for, and you should be on your way to a successful tank. Next, we're going to go ahead and talk about a tank gone by, the muck guppy tank. Guppies are hard water fish that, given the correct conditions, are extremely easy to care for and extremely hardy. This tank was a cornucopia of colors with various tail shapes and colors and various types of movements with all of the guppies. One of the fun aspects of this tank is that it would evolve over time as the guppies would interbreed, changing the colors and makeup of the tank. You can also add some other species to this tank, like tetras, platys, or some other smaller fish to complement your guppies, as well as maybe a pleco or two. This tank was aquascaped with various types of plants and supplemented with gravel that I picked up from the hardware store, as well as dragonstone and some other rock work that I had from other fish projects. So definitely setting up a muck guppy tank is definitely a really fun tank that can provide enjoyment for years to come. Staying in the fish barn, let's go ahead here and take a look at the classic discus and cardinal tetra tank. These discus have been with me for over two years now and have grown from babies into full-size adults. Discus are often associated with being soft water fish that are hard to take care of. However, you can have success with discus in hard water as long as you keep your temperature up above 82 degrees and look for an online source with discus condition for harder water or buying discus that are locally bred. This will make the transition into their new home very seamless compared to fish that come from a different water source. Heading into the aquascape of this tank, you'll find this tank with a sand substrate using dragonstone, driftwood, and planted with Vallisneria. With proper planting and filtration, you can definitely keep discus in a variety of different water conditions. Moving along now, let's take a look at a couple of examples of an Mbuna tank, a community setup as well as a species only tank. Mbuna are colorful rock dwelling cichlids that come from Lake Malawi in Africa. One of the great things about Mbuna are the females and males are equally colorful unlike some other Lake Malawi cichlids like peacocks and haps. The first tank we're actually looking at here is a 125 gallon tank, but you can have this same setup in a 75 gallon. This tank is both home to purple ACI and yellow lab cichlids. I do keep the rock work sparse in this tank, since I do breed a lot of these fish, and it makes it easier to catch the females out to strip the fry. I've also added Vallisneria to this tank uh, to help with line of sight blocks, since the Vallisneria does grow quite tall. Uh, the Vallis done fine in this tank, even though the cichlids will pick at it from time to time. One thing to keep in mind with this type of tank setup is to make sure you research your Mbuna species properly to make sure you don't create unwanted hybrids and make sure that your fish are compatible with each other. Different types of Mbuna definitely do display different types of aggression. So let's now dive into the second tank, which is the species only tank. Uh, this is a 75 gallon that is home to the Pseudotrophius interruptus. This tank has a gravel substrate instead of the sand, but I'm still keeping the jungle valve. This is a tank I wanted to include just to show you an example of a species only Mbuna tank. This tank is a great example of a tank where you could keep an Mbuna species. It's more aggressive that doesn't play well with others. Before we leave these two setups, one thing you do want to keep in mind uh, is you do want to have a healthy filtration system and a good water change regimen in order to keep these fish happy and healthy. So let's go ahead and take a look at this Lake Tanganyika shell dweller tank. Uh, well, not as color as the Trophius and Mbuna that we saw earlier. These fish are full of personality. This tank is home to Neolamprologus similis, as well as some Daffodil Burchardi. The Neolamprologus similis are always moving the stand around and redecorating the tank, which makes them very fun to watch. 
The brashardi make a great complimentary fish darting in and out of the rock work. Coming from Lake Tanganyika, these fish require the same hard water as the trophies that we spoke of earlier. In the wild, they are known to eat small crustaceans and other meaty organisms, so they definitely like some meat in their diet. While the similes are colony spawners, make sure to research the species of shell dweller, as not all of them are colony breeders and can be aggressive towards fish of the same species. While not as colorful as some of the other options that we looked at earlier, this is definitely a fun and entertaining tank. Mm -hmm.